What about reorientation? Remember, reorientation is this cool thing that I carried on for a long time about because it's so interesting. Reorientation is this particular aspect of the navigation system. It's been studied behaviorally in rodents, in young humans, in human adults, and lots of other animals, actually. And the key thing about reorientation is this is how an animal gets their bearing when they're disoriented. And the key finding is they use the shape of space around them. They don't use landmarks to reorient themselves. Okay, that's a key finding. This is all stuff I talked about before. And the, and the evidence that animals use the shape of space to, or, to reorient is when you have shown a rodent that there's goodies in that corner, right? The left side of the short wall, essentially. And then you disorient him and put him back in the box. He goes 50-50 to those two corners, showing that he's learned something like the food is on the left side of the short wall. Not in words, presumably, but some mental language that holds that information, okay? Okay, so that's using the shape of space for reorientation. Is that ability to use the shape of space, this is a different sense of space and head direction cells, the shape of space around you, is that present independent of experience? Well, again, we can't test that in humans because we can't deprive humans of experiencing the shape of space around them. Was there a question? No, okay. Um, but we can test it in animals, okay? With something called controlled rearing, okay, that I've talked about before. So again, um, we can't test this even in animals. It's hard to test at birth. Lots of animals can't navigate very well at birth, right? So we want to test them after birth, but we don't want them to have the relevant experience because that's what we're asking is, would this ability be there even without the relevant experience? Okay. So the answer to all of this, um, the, the way around this, is to use controlled rearing. Just like Sugita did with the face-deprived monkeys, and just like Arcaro also did with face-deprived monkeys, the behavioral study and the um, functional MRI study. But this will be uh, a controlled a rearing study in a different organism, and it's pretty cute. It goes like this. This is a group in Italy that has a whole lab that uses this paradigm, and it's very, very powerful. So what they do is um, they, uh, again, I just said this, the whole idea is raise an animal without the relevant experience, figure out if the ability arises anyway. Okay, so in this case, what they do is, okay, they get fertilized eggs, chicken eggs, from a local hatchery that's conveniently near their lab, okay? They bring those fertilized eggs into the lab and put them in an incubator, and they hatch them in darkness. Then for the first few days, you get a nice little chicken. It's in the light here, but that's just so you can see it. It actually hatches in the darkness, so there's no visual experience. Then you put them in um, cages of different shapes, either a nice rectangular sh shape like this that would be relevant for reorienting, or a circular space like that that has no geometric cues because it's symmetrical, okay? So they spend their first three days of life in one or the other of those containers, okay? Um, you then, in order to get a behavioral result uh, out of them, you have to use their natural behavior, which is that they imprint on mama bird. And you may know that imprinting is pretty nonspecific. Baby birds will imprint on nearly anything that moves. So they take a big red plastic object and they dangle it in the middle of the cage and the little chicks follow the red object, that's mom. Okay, that's what they do, okay? Um, so then you can use that behavior to test their ability, okay? Um, and so you kind of get them in the groove, you, you show the mom, and mom disappears behind an occluded, uh, an occluder. And then you let the, ki the chick go follow mom, which the chick wants to do. So they do a few trials like that, they've imprinted, they're gonna follow mom. This gives us a way to ask the chick, where do you think mom is? And that gives us a way to ask, what cues are you using to reorient, even though you've been raised without geometric information, okay? All right, and the thing I really love about this, oh, I guess it's on a later slide, is that after you do the whole experiment, you take one or two trials on that chick, you're done with that chick, they have the relevant experience, you give them back to the hatchery, and the hatchery does their thing. So it's just like a really nice little symbiotic uh, science farming enterprise. Okay, okay, so here's, 
uh, actually what they do. Okay, so here's how the reorientation test goes. Um, after this chick is raised in one of those two environments, the circular one which, with no geometric information or the uh, rectangular one with geometric information, and they've learned to you know, follow big red plastic mom, um, you then put the chick in this box here. The chick is in there in this wire mesh that holds him in there so he can't run around. He's in this rectangular space and there are four symmetrical occluders in the corner, okay? You then take the red object, mom, and hide it behind one of the blue panels in full view of the chick, okay? So now the chick knows where mom is. Now you bring down an opaque cylinder around where the chick is, okay? And while the opaque cylinder is down, you rotate the box 90 degrees. So now the chick has no way to tell, you know, things are rotated, I'm disoriented, what's what, how do I know what's where to go, okay? So this is reorientation in a newly hatched chick that's been reared under controlled conditions. Okay, all right, so now um, once you rotate the box, then you lift up the opaque occluder and the cage and you see where the chick goes. Okay, everybody get this? It's a little bit convoluted, but it's just a version of, it's a chick version of the same reorientation task we've been talking about all along. Okay. Um, all right. You do 16 trials. Okay. And then you give the chick back to the hatchery. <laughs> okay. So here's what happens for chicks that are raised in that rectangular cage. They have geometric experience during those first three days of life. Okay, so it's kind of a control case. And what you find is that when you've hid mom in a corner that is on the right side of the short wall, they go preferentially to the two corners consistent with that more than the other two corners. Consistent with the idea that they can use geometric information to reorient themselves. They're not perfect, but they're way better than chance. Okay, does that make sense? They go to the two corners that are consistent showing that they can use the geometric information. But these are the chicks that were raised with the geometric experience. What about the chicks raised in the cylinder without geometric experience? They do the same thing. Okay, and this is the first time they've experienced, this testing condition is the first time they've experienced any space that isn't symmetrical, any place where they could possibly use geometric information to orient and they do it on the first trials, okay? Everybody got that? So that tells us that this ability to reorient, reorient based on the shape of space when you're disoriented doesn't require um, experience with, um, with the geometry of space. Now, you might, <coughs> you might be thinking, well, that cylindrical cage, it doesn't have something to break the symmetry, but there's still something geometric. There's a floor, there's a wall. I agree, that bugged me too. They did another experiment in which they raised the chicks in total darkness. First three days, no visual experience at all. And the chicks still do that. Okay, so no visual experience. That's an even stronger case. 